What do you picture when you hear the word learning? What about memory? It can get pretty busy inside a classroom from being able to learn, retain, and retrieve information from memory to all the biological processes of what the brain is doing can sometimes be downright overwhelming. With neuroscience, it blends a constructive union between educational psychology and evidence-based medical biology. With how fast-paced everything can be when it comes to research, reading articles, and data statistics, critical thinking demands us to point out the flaws in research. We can sometimes get so fixated on finding the answers, critiquing and pointing out the problems, that we can easily forget the journey of the question or highlighting the alternative solutions. If we just take a moment to understand how does our mind and brain really work? Our hopeful main objective for all of you is that by the end of these short videos, you will get to have another effective teaching strategy to add to your professional pedagogy practice learn how it is effective from a cognitive behavioral memory perspective and from a neural biological perspective of the key components of how learning is done. In this interactive video, you can follow along, review at your own pace, or feel free to explore the other guided resources if you are more curious about learning about neuroscience and learning. To quote Brooks, motivation is the main catalyst of human goals, behavior, and actions. Researchers have long pondered and wondered in the pursuits of understanding the underlying factors of motivation is crucial to a better understanding of human action in different social contexts and behavior. In regards to education-related motivation, that characterizes it as not a continuum of extrinsic and intrinsic motivational factors, but rather in terms of motivational goals, interrogative and impermanent, and the brain systems that they encode. To put this into understandable terms, I want you to think about things that you enjoy that make you feel motivated. Just think of a wonderful thought. This is an example of pairing high reason with a rational thought that provokes a powerful emotional response. This is why we are capable of remembering moments that have a more emotional enriched experience that is more distinct while our mind prunes out more tedious and mundane tasks. The two main executives for memory formation are the hippocampus for sorting and organizing memories into the prefrontal cerebral cortex and the amygdala. When something is engaging, dopamine related mechanisms of reward are influenced through the acquisition of behaviors. For example, the other memory systems such as sensory or visual or emotional memory. Recent research have focused on the importance of upregulation of activities in the hippocampus by dopamine in the formations of declarative memories. The amygdala is responsible for creating that emotional experience that makes it more specific in terms of prioritizing formation of neurons, connecting and associating with that experience, thus creating a stronger connection uh, of memories when it is transferring that information into the hippocampus. Later, the hippocampus acts like an executive secretary, organizing and sorting that information to the designated areas of the brain at its proper locations. But wait, I know what you're thinking. 
We can't make every lesson into an enriched, wonderful, engaging experience. That would be impossible, not to mention impractical. But the wonderful thing about the brain, by understanding how memories are formed, sorted, paired with an emotional association of something enjoyable, is also the same process when we are stressed or when the mind is disengaged or wants to procrastinate. In addition, as how the brain is capable of these amazing feats are also the same functions on how people are able to accomplish great memorization skills, metacognition, where learners can be self-driven and self-motivated to self-perpetuated to learn. Imagine yourself in the classroom. Think about all the strategies you already put into place, trying to outline the learning objectives, reviewing information that students have previously learned prior, scaffolding based on what students are familiar with, capable of, in order to add onto newer complex concepts. And how often do you find yourself praising and rewarding learners when they achieve an accomplishment? using compliments. Those are examples of minimizing stress and anxiety that the hippocampus and amygdala tries of, to avoid associating in order to form memories with, and is able to transfer more information into the prefrontal cortex when thinking using logic and problem solving itself. Studies and research have delved into the effectiveness of memory, learning when students are under stress, or exploring how mindfulness can be used to optimize motivation, memory, and learning. As we learn about how, when the amygdala and hippocampus are synchronized, it can also help better understand that this is another effective tool to, when learning about when a student is dysregulated or trying to optimize regulation and calmness in order to optimize memory retrieval, retention, and decoding. I want to take a quick moment to pause. Neuroscience is not new and incorporating it into educational learning does not need to be reinvented. If anything, this is an opportunity to help praise you for already using strategies that support the findings of neuroscience researchers. I want you to take a minute now and reflect on how many strategies you have already used to try to stimulate the reward part of the amygdala and hippocampus of students. How many strategies could you notice in this very video? How did the music and visuals make you feel? Was it effective in helping you remember how memory works? Now it is my turn to give you a little bit of shot of dopamine from your amygdala by saying thank you for your time. And I hope that you found this section on neuroscience very helpful and I hope that it may serve you better in your future pedagogical practice. As I pass this off to my partner, take cares and bye for now.